I go around some of these areas and you see, you know, there's just no control burning or even cutting done. There's a massive fuel load. Some of it right next to main roads. All it takes is a, you know, even just a cigarette out the window. It's going to be inevitable that some of these areas will have, you know, a massive devastating wildfire. Climate change is driving more continental influenced weather occasions. Normally it's maritime Gulf Stream air, but um, we, at the turn of the century, once or twice a year, you might see now three or four times, by the end of this century, probably up six times. And we've already twice this year seen the continental um, influenced warm, dry weather. Um, and there's already been a thousand acres that have gone up in wildfire. Not everybody's managing for grouse. Um, that, so, you know, the, the, there's, there's much more extensive management taking place in, in, in quite large areas. And so um, where there is a no burn policy, there is only cutting. And as I say, cutting can only go so far. So um, we're seeing accumulations of biomass almost everywhere um, across the Peak District. The danger is that, that, that everything that that's accumulating is, is going to go up in one fell swoop and, and take that carbon from beneath the surface as well. Burning season is from the 1st of October till the 15th of April where we carried out control burning um, and we have a lot of equipment, tractors, fogging units to do the control burns um, and we're taking off the top layer of vegetation, you know mostly heather, um, to reduce the fuel load and to create a mosaic of habitats for all the wildlife. Gamekeepers work with the fire service, don't mm, they? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And I mean, just the local knowledge of the ground and stuff. We know how to get onto certain areas. You know, obviously, the traveling on the moor, it's it's quite a harsh place. There's gutters and hags and stuff like that. Whereas they wouldn't wouldn't know how to get to an area. The amount of fuel in key locations um, where the quantity is 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 such that the nature of the fire would be well in uh, beyond the capabilities of the um, fire and rescue service, and and that already within the Peak District there are vast areas that are beyond their capabilities. Some of the fire um, departments are getting better equipment for tackling wildfires but you know we've gone to some um, where we turn up with our quad bikes fogging units and they're there just with Scotty packs which is a backpack that holds maybe eight ten litres of water where we're coming up with 500 litres. Keeper and community um, is really great for that, you know, we just send a message out if there's a wildfire and everybody turns up, you know, it's like, it's like a rapid response team. What we found so far is that yes, burning of course combusts a lot of carbon, it goes into the atmosphere so you have a huge loss initially. Over the first five years, burning really a massive loss of carbon, whereas cutting, leaving brush, yes you have not lost to combustion, but what we find is year after year you lose money in the bank because of decomposition. That organic matter lying there will be decomposed by microbes uh, and it won't be converted to peat, all of it, no, a large proportion like on your compost heap, will be returned to the atmosphere. But it's just not this initial combustion. So again, we need to cover the entire period to compare apples and apples. Otherwise, we compare different things. So I can't say for definite if burning will be better than cutting, but so far it looks actually like that burning is certainly not that anticipated large carbon loss. If you're on a very dry peatland, particularly when a wildfire happens during summer, that will generate so much heat, so much intensity, because it's not a cool burn, it's an uncontrolled hot burn, and it will most likely burn into the peat, and then it might smolder for weeks or months, and you lose decades, centuries, potentially thousands of years of carbon when a fire burns into the peat. So there are really important difference between a controlled cool burn, small scale, under the right conditions, and an uncontrolled wildfire with hot temperatures. And then the alternative might be rewilding, let it go and see what happens. But you will get a build-up of fuel, you will. And the Peak District is, I think, an area where we need to watch that very carefully because it's an inherently drier peatland area. It does not actually receive that much rainfall. So the risk for drying out 
is very high. Uh, well, it's a contentious issue, I think for a good reason, because we don't know, and we should know. And the best way might be actually to uh, allow a policy environment where management can be adaptive, but is supported by money from the government to allow monitoring. It doesn't matter who owns the land, the problem affects us all. So it's really important that we're all part of the solution. We're, we're, we're not advocating any particular tool. It's really important that all of the tools are available. So the report needs to also um, um, engage the um, policymakers um, because, you know, the SSSIs, the, the, there's restricted activities with them, and, but we need to manage areas 3-6% possibly to actually achieve um, respectable fire breaks um, and we certainly shouldn't rule out um, fire being used as a preventative measure as it is in, 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 in many parts of, of, of the world. What would be really good to see is recognition of the scale of the issue that exists and um, commitments from government to resource the response to enable the policy makers to facilitate the measures that need to be taken to protect the landscape.